Welcome into Locked On Phillies. In today's episode, we're going to talk about Andrew Painter's inning limit and why I got called crazy this weekend for how I would handle the Phillies' young stud pitcher. Aaron Nola, maybe near an extension? We'll see, and we'll recap our poll about who should be the Phillies' closer. It's a packed Locked On Phillies. You are Locked On Phillies. Your daily Philadelphia Phillies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Yes, this is Locked On Phillies. I am your host, Connor Thomas. I've been talking Philadelphia Phillies baseball for years over on 97.5, the fanatic on the radio, NBC Sports Philadelphia on the television side, credentialed Philadelphia Phillies media member, former collegiate baseball player, a laundry list of resume items that I don't need to go through. On top of that, I'm happy to be here with you as your host of Locked On Phillies. I want to thank you for making Locked On Phillies your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast thank you again we cleared the 1000 subscribers mark on youtube if you have not checked out the show on youtube please do so hit the subscribe button it's a great way to follow along with the content gives you a little bit more element than just listening to it uh it's it's fun to be able to put a face to a voice if you haven't had a chance to do that yet with me uh, and my work here on locked on phillies it helps me out as well so it's a win 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 for everybody involved but Anyway, let's jump into today's episode because the first thing I want to get into is maybe the biggest storyline this season outside of Bryce Harper's health. And there's other things going on. Trey Turner, the retooled bullpen. Uh, will Nick Cassianos bounce back? How does Reese Hoskins perform in a contract year? If Aaron Nola is not extended, how does he perform in a contract year? But to me, the most difficult thing that the Philadelphia Phillies will have to deal with, because some of those other things are just, hey, Play the guys, and you're going to see how it turns out. You hope this goes this way, or you hope that goes that way. But this one, no, there's a little bit of strategy in how you handle the pitch limit or pitch count or innings limit, whatever you want to do for Andrew Painter. If he is indeed called up to start the season, or do you start him down in Lehigh because of the strain of innings on a young arm? Now, Andrew Painter is the top pitching prospect in baseball. He's never thrown above double A. But he's 6'7", 215, 215, not 250, 215 pounds. If he was 6'7", 250, he'd be playing in the NBA. No, 6'7", 215 at 19 years of age. He's got a very smooth, mechanically comfortable delivery, delivery with a big frame that seems like it's built to throw a lot of innings. At some point in his career, this guy's going to be a 200-plus inning guy a year. Great. That's awesome. Will it be this year? Very, very, very likely it will not be this year. And when you see young pitchers come up, the biggest thing that you've got to do, especially guys that are like Andrew Painter, that are top pitching prospects in all of baseball, not just in the Phillies organization, you have to be careful because it's a very big jump in usage for these young players. And we know that the current baseball landscape, you're terrified of Tommy John, you're terrified of, labrum surgery and stuff that would shut them down for the year dead arm wearing them out and everything like that losing these guys at the time of the season where it matters most because they're not used to the workload frankly you're worried about that with your regular everyday starters who have been up for a while much less a 19 year old kid so i I get all the concerns here's why i would start him on the major league roster and i would let him go and there's no innings limit there's no pitch count or nothing Just flat out, hey, kid, take the ball every fifth day and we'll cross bridges as we come to them. I think that's the best way to handle it. The first reason, looking from a team perspective in general, you're without Bryce Harper for months of the season. That means that you need to play really, really good baseball the first couple of months to withstand missing an MVP caliber player. Now, does that mean I think the Phillies fall apart if Andrew Painter's not up and throwing with them? No, they're still going to be fine. Like, they're a very good team outside of Bryce Harper. But that is important to say, well, yeah, you need to stack wins early so that you're not behind the eight ball when Harper comes back from recovering from Tommy John surgery. So that's number one. Number two is I don't understand what people think he'd be doing down in Lehigh Valley that would put him in much better position to throw – all year the major league season runs longer he's not just going to be sitting on his hands down in lehigh valley saying okay you're going to pitch like every 10 days and you're going to throw two innings 
and we're, we're going to have you in an ice bath for the rest of the time because we want to protect your arm. Like, no, the kid is still young. He's learning new stuff. It, reports just came out that apparently he's trying to develop a cutter down at Major League Spring Training in Clearwater. He is learning and developing and feeling things out, and it helps him to be able to throw as much as possible when he's doing these things. If he's going to do it, I'd rather him do it at the major league level than in Lehigh because the, he's talented enough. Panther is absolutely talented enough to be on the major league roster. So, yes, that's why uh, another reason why I'm bringing him up. And I got told I was crazy by a couple of people over at 97.5 The Fanatic this weekend when I was doing a, a weekend hosting shift because they're like, you're not going to bring him up. You're going to lose him in August because you're going to have to shut him down and everything. I said, okay, shut down, be damned. He's good enough to be up now. Why would I waste it? part of like time with an asset, a very valuable one to put him in Lehigh to save him for, I don't know, maybe a, like a, a deep playoff run in October. And even then, what is he going to be at start number 10 in his career? And I'm going to hand him the ball in the NLCS or something like that. I'd rather him have the experience early. And then if you shut him down partway through the year, kind of like what you did with Zach Wheeler last year, when he started having the shoulder issues and the arm issues ahead of the playoffs, then you can either reactivate him or you go with Bailey Falter. And guess what? Is it ideal to not have Painter available? No, but you have an idea of what you have there and he gets experience. And if he's not ready for the playoffs, he's not. This, is, this isn't this is found money, uh, if you understand the expression. This isn't like a guy they didn't expect to be somebody for them. He's a first-round pick. We've been hearing about this kid for a couple of years now because he's only been up for a couple of years in the minor league system from high school. But – this isn't a guy that you came, you went into 2022 saying, okay, well, even if they don't win it this year, they get Painter next year. No, this is a guy that's progressed unbelievably that now you're excited could be something. Take a shot that he is. And if he isn't, well, he'll be there in 2024. And if the worst case scenario happens and he blows out his elbow, he needs Tommy John surgery. Knock on wood. We don't want that to happen, obviously. And I'm not saying overuse the kid's arm, but I'm saying. The worst case is, okay, then you're looking at late 2024, maybe 2025, and the kid is 21 years old. That's still fine. Like, uh, Spencer Strider is, what, 24? And he came up and had nearly one rookie of the year for the Braves last year. Like, unbelievable. Uh, or did he win rookie of the year? Either he or Michael Harris won. I think Michael Harris won it. Anyway, there's years until... Like, he's got plenty of – he's got a long career. You're not going to ruin his arm by bringing him up and having him throw 100 innings over the course of a Major League Baseball season. Go ahead and do it. The other thing, the last thing I'll get into on this front with Andrew Painter, too, is going with that Zach Wheeler shutdown last year. He had arm issues. The Phillies shut him down. He finished the season pitching the final game, your biggest game, the final game of the World Series. That shows me that I can trust this organization to handle – his arm. This is not Spencer Howard. Uh, this is not Sixto Sanchez. This is, these are not these guys that just like come up and fizzle out. This guy is special. He is different. He's going to be a elite level pitcher at the major league level one day. He absolutely is. Uh, people were telling me this weekend, don't jump the gun. Don't know what he is. Never seen him throw higher than double A. Listen, watched a lot of baseball in my life. Seen some really good pitchers come through. He's a really, 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 really good pitcher. So I want that player on the Major League roster. I trust the organization to handle his arm be safe with him. I trust that he can handle a, a sizable workload, we'll say, uh, comparative to your average 19-year-old that comes up and makes a Major League debut, which is not an average 19-year-old at all. And the one argument that I think stands in the way of what I'm saying is the service time keeping him down until you clear so you get an extra year of service time that you have team control for i get that i think that's one a stupid rule in baseball needs to be changed because it manipulates players ability to play at the next level and earn the right money that they've earned by their play i also think it's dumb for contending teams to try and get in a year somewhere way down the line rather than bringing up a player that can really help you win now I think Andrew Painter can help you win now. And if you have to deal with uh, shutting him down later on in the year because soreness develops or he gets dead arm or he drops off in production, we'll deal with that then. That's a problem for August, Connor, and the August Philadelphia Phillies. But right now, your problem would be putting him in Lehigh Valley in front of 10,000 people and letting him strike out 40 people per game. I know that's not realistic, but you get what I'm saying. 
strike out so many people and not have that benefit at the major league level. So that's why I don't have any issue with Andrew Painter starting on the major league roster. That's why I would do it. That's why I'm not worried about the innings limit or anything like that. Just how I feel, and you could call me reckless all you want. I think the kid's ready for it. But, hey, we'll see. Coming up next, I know this pitcher's been ready for it, and he's earned some money. But how close are the Philadelphia Phillies to an extension with Aaron Nola? I'll tell you some of the things that I've been hearing coming up as we continue Locked On Phillies. Oh, yeah, let's talk about my friends over at FanDuel. The midway point of the NBA season is here. The All-Star game was this past weekend. Your Sixers, Mac McClung, the dunk contest winner. Could you imagine the money you could have won if you had bet on that on FanDuel? It's the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back. If your first bet doesn't win, just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe. It's secure. It's super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line, the point scores, and threes drained, all that good stuff. All the fun stuff from All-Star Weekend you could have bet on, the All-Star Game, and now as the Sixers prepare for the second half of the season, so does the rest of the NBA, you can jump in on some great props there. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. Let's say you think Embiid's going to score more than 25 points. Well, if you think he's going to score more than 25 points and the Sixers are going to win, you can combine those two bets and go from winning $20 to, I don't know, say winning $40. Isn't that better? Much better. More money, less problems. Sorry, Biggie. That's just how it works when you have FanDuel. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets. Uh, oh, I already read that part. See, I got caught up in the rap reference, and then all of a sudden, lost where I was at in the copy. Don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, I got to say I told you so, and I know I do this a lot. You're probably getting tired of Connor being right so often. But that's why you listen to Locked on Phillies, right? I'm giving you good information. I'm giving you logical takes, or at least I'm trying to. I'm doing my best. And Friday's episode, well, we were discussing about Sir Anthony Dominguez's extension and Jose Alvarado's extension. And then I was saying, well, extend this guy one day, and you extend that guy literally the very next day. Who do you look at next that needs an extension? Reese, Reese Hoskins is probably going to hit the open market, and you got to see what he does this year to prove more to you. But Aaron Nola, well, he needs an extension as well. His contract's up at the end of the year, and you want to get him locked down and see what you can get him signed for. He's the logical next guy to reach out to. So I said, hey, uh, don't be surprised if the Philadelphia Phillies have already started talks with Aaron Nola on a long-term extension with the ball club. And guess what? Saturday. After I recorded my show Friday, so you heard it here first, please credit Connor Thomas, breaking news. No, I didn't have sources. I told you that. That was just a, a gut feeling. And then Matt Gelb, who does a great job covering the Philadelphia Phillies, he was down in spring training and reported that the Phillies and Aaron Nola are working on a long-term extension. So, yeah, nailed it. Love that. That's how it should be done. Now, does it mean they'll get one done? No. Does it mean the number – will be where you want it to be as far as how much Aaron Nola is getting paid. Not necessarily. I don't know the terms of the contract. That's between Nola and his agent and Dave Dombrowski and John Middleton and the Phillies brass and everything like that. They'll work that out. What I will say is I think he's deserving of a big money extension. I think he's a top 20 pitcher in baseball. I think when you have guys like that in a championship contending window, you keep them with the team as long as possible. And this team has already shown you they're willing to shell out for elite-level talent. Aaron Nola is an elite-level pitcher. He is. Okay? I get he's not a Cy Young winner, probably. But on his best day, he's that level of pitcher. You can talk about the consistency all you want. You can talk about the struggles in the last couple starts of the playoffs. But down the stretch last year to get you in, he was incredible. I want him in Philadelphia Phillies pinstripes. I do. I understand if... 2019 and 2020 and 2021 left a bit of a sour taste in your mouth. Him being a guy who's just never seems to be able to get the job done for this team. And I get if you're upset with how last year ended for Aaron Nola, but the bottom line is not having Aaron Nola makes your team significantly worse than when he is in a Philadelphia Phillies uniform. So we'll see how the signing process goes and if they can get an extension done. He said he doesn't want to negotiate during the season, but we've got over a month until the season starts. So plenty of time to hash out those contract talks down there in Clearwater. What I will say 
as I've been hearing, in addition to the Matt Gelb report. Uh, I have been hearing whispers that this extension could be done as early as two weeks from now. Like they're close is just some of the rumors that I've been hearing. So keep an eye out for an Aaron Nolan extension coming in the next week, week and a half. See what you can uh, see what the Phillies can get done rather there, because I do think this is a top priority for the organization when it comes to contract situations right now. And I think it's something that Aaron Nolan would also be very interested in getting done. He's comfortable here. He's playing with a winner. Uh, he's had success here and the Phillies, Love him as an organization, love having him, and he's earned a long money or a long term and a big money extension. So just keep your ear to the ground, keep your eyes peeled. You'll have breaking news from Locked On Phillies, and I'll respond to it as soon as I see it come down. If it does indeed come down, like I think it's going to, and like I'm hearing it possibly could sooner rather than later. But yeah, that's just a little bit of my thoughts on the Aaron Nola contract situation and what's going on there for the Philadelphia Phillies, one of their top. Two starters in the organization. Man, it has been a starting pitching heavy episode of Locked on Phillies. And coming up next, we're going to stay with the hurlers, but we're going to discuss the bullpen and more specifically, the closer's role. Our off the pole question from this weekend dealt with the closer and who you want to be the closer. And I got to be honest, this might be the most surprising response to an off the pole that I've ever gotten from you out there. That responded on Twitter at LO underscore Philly. So coming up next, we're going to do a little off the pole response time. The second part of our off the pole segment where I respond to uh, what you voted on and break down why, man, I got to really disagree with what the majority of you said. We'll discuss as we wrap up Locked on Phillies. I just checked the weather report, or I guess I, I asked, uh, I looked up what time is the sunset in Philadelphia today? And the answer was 542. We're getting closer to summer. Longer days, hotter days, less layers. You can't get away with wearing the sweatshirts anymore to hide the 20 pounds you gained over the holidays. If you're trying to get back in shape, or maybe you just want a healthy snack you can have day in and day out, check out Built Bar. It's awesome. They can really help you if you use Built Bar, you want to eat them. They can really help you get through this tough stretch of the year where you're trying to work in better shape for the summer. They got 100% real chocolate. They've got some great flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond, all that great stuff. They've got the Built Bar Puffs, which are marshmallow-infused protein bars, and they taste like candy bars. But listen to these numbers. 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, with a whopping 17 grams of protein. That's unbelievable numbers for something that tastes the way Built Bar does. It's a really, really good product. It's tasty. It's easy to get. You can now, instead of having to go online and order them, you can get them in Walmart. You can get them in your local Sam's Club if you want to get them in bulk, up to a 13-bar box. Yeah, absolutely. And you're going to tear through that no problem. I'm telling you, you got to try Built Bar if you haven't yet. The flavors are awesome. The quality of the product is great. The way it helps you get ready for your summer is awesome. This is the best time of the year to break into a Built Bar. So go ahead and check them out. Try some new flavors if you haven't yet. Definitely do it. Take my word for it. They're awesome. All right, it's time for Off the Poll. Now, what Off the Poll is, if you're not familiar, it's a two-segment type of segment, right? If that makes sense. I'm trying to think of it. But basically, it's two parts. On Normally, it's Friday. The Then this week, it was Friday as well. Normally, the Friday before the weekend. Well, I guess that's repetitive. Friday, the day before the weekend, or my final show of the week. I'll put up a Twitter poll, at LO underscore Phillies on Twitter. And it'll be something that I discuss on the show on Friday, what the poll is, but not what my thoughts are, because I don't want to influence the poll too much. I want to get your unbiased opinion on how you feel about certain Philadelphia Phillies issues. I'm used to radio where we do live callers. This is basically my version of having live feedback. Not totally live. Of course, it's delayed a couple of days because I have to wait for the poll result to come in. But it's the way I get feedback from how the rest of Philadelphia Phillies nation is feeling about certain topics. This week, our poll question, who do you want to see as the Phillies closer this season? Now, obviously, this is the second part of lock, or of off the poll where I discuss the results and I give you my thought. There are four options. Jose Alvarado, Sir Anthony Dominguez, Craig Kimbrell, and Gregory Soto. Sir Anthony Dominguez won with a whopping 63% of the vote. 63% of responders said Sir Anthony Dominguez. For the record, the next highest was 17% of people, and they said Craig Kimbrell. 
16% of you say Gregory Soto, and only 4% said Jose Alvarado. I get why Jose Alvarado was last. Flamethrowing lefty that seems to be all over the place at times. Uh, you also have the people who are slightly biased because the last time we saw him was him giving up a home run to Jordan Alvarez to basically lose uh, the World Series. Not that that's what lost the World Series. It was the final straw, basically, because it was in the last game. But you know how I feel about that already. I don't put that on him as much as I put that on pulling Zach Wheeler. Different conversation for a different day. Anyway, I get why Jose Alvarado's last. I don't understand why Gregory Soto came in third. He's been an all-star closer multiple years at the major league level. Sir Anthony Dominguez has never had a full season as the closer in his career. And all of a sudden, we feel more comfortable with Sir Anthony Dominguez there. Uh, not that he's not capable, but I don't understand why Soto's so low here. Craig Kimbrell, at his peak, was an unbelievable closer. I get he's not at his peak, not nearly anymore. But I think he has a chance to be really good for this team. I wouldn't put him in the closer's role. So 17% of the vote is probably based on reputation for Craig Kimbrell. But I don't understand why people are apprehensive to have Gregory Soto as the closer. He's the he's one of only two guys on this roster that I think you should be super confident in being able to handle that ability with Craig Kimbrell. And Kimbrell's over the hill. Soto is a young player who's just coming off his second straight all-star appearance for the Detroit Tigers in the American League. I, I don't understand why Soto was so low. I don't understand why Dominguez was so high. I think what it is is a lack of knowledge of how good Gregory Soto actually is. And I think it's we love Sir Anthony Dominguez, which is fair. Now, if you ask me the best overall pitcher in the bullpen this year, I would probably say it's Sir Anthony Dominguez. So that begs the question, should you always have your best overall reliever at closer? I don't think so necessarily. And I think in the landscape of this bullpen, Sir Anthony Dominguez is better used in either a setup role or your top righty-righty specialist that can come in in the biggest spots in the game, get outs where you need them late. I, I wouldn't be like uh, pitchforks and um, – Torches. Yeah, that's the other word I was looking for. Pitchforks and torches. If Sir Anthony Dominguez is the closer, like he'll be fine. I think Soto's better. I think Dominguez could be more utilized by this bullpen if he's not the closer. But hey, that's how the fans are feeling. They're feeling Dominguez. Maybe that's how Rob Thompson's feeling. Maybe that's how this organization's feeling. I honestly don't know. I think Soto's going to be the guy, but that's me. And we'll see. And maybe I'm crazy. And maybe I'm crazy on the Andrew Painter thing from earlier. And maybe I'm crazy on the Aaron Nola extension talks and how I feel about that from earlier. But hey, that's what you get on Locked on Phillies. Some crazy takes, some hopefully right ones. And so far, I've had a pretty good track record with that, but it's not too late to completely fall off the map. No, I think I have a good idea of what's going on with the Philadelphia Phillies. And yeah, it's uh, fun content every day. So I want to thank you for making Locked on Phillies your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, now make your second listen Locked on MLB Prospects. Lindsey Crosby does great work over there. Prospects are a huge part of the Philadelphia Phillies future, including Andrew Painter. So lock in on Lindsey Crosby for the latest breaking prospect news. Uh, that podcast is available wherever you get your podcast, YouTube, Odyssey app, all that good stuff. You know the spiel. You know where to find podcasts at this point, right? It's 2023. And you can find us there at Locked on Phillies as well. So thank you again. Thank you again for 1,000 subscribers. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube or rate, review, and like everything on the podcast platforms that you use, please do so. It really helps me out here on Locked on Phillies. And uh, that's all for today's episode. I will talk to you next time on the next Locked on Phillies.